Okay, so you can see what I need to do. Uh, my consideration is I've taken my handy little clothespin, which everybody pretty much knows is my favorite tool, and I've uh, tried to make it very uh, straight up and down, very nice and vertical. And actually, this one even comes in a tiny bit of just like two millimeters yeah, at the top. The top. Yeah. And it, I mean, that's so much better than having it out. Mm -hmm. If it's out, then the, the lid is going to jingle jangle back and forth. If it comes in at the top, but it's the right measurement at the base where the lid hits the base of the neck, then it's going to be nice and snug. Okay. Any questions? Nope. Okay. So this is actually quite a bit of clay. So my, my thought is I want this to fit snugly on the outside of the neck. And I want, I need that depth. I need about an inch. I need this to be on the inside about an eight inch tall. So I'm just going to open it up. And you also want to think, and I know Susan does a lot of this with her pieces, she thinks about the bottoms and the tops and mm. everything because when you turn a piece of Susan's over, there's always a beautiful surprise on the bottom. Yes. Um, so you mm. want to think about the inside of the lid too. So it's always nice to just kind of put a nice little spiral on the inside. Mm -hmm. Then when the glaze, it'll catch the glaze nicely so the inside might have just this nice little little spiral on the inside. And to make the spiral, um, just bring your fingers in pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my inside measurement. It's way too narrow. Bring it out a little bit more. This one will be trim. I like my universal lid when I get to that one simply because I can make it, cut under it, and walk away. And I can walk away and come back three months and just take a sponge and go around it usually, um, as long as it's been cut under. I, I recommend that you use the same clay um, from the same pug. A pug is just, from, there are two pugs in a box of clay. And so if, like I used this clay last night, this lump of clay to make all of these, so I wanna make all the lids from that same pug. Uh, you will find not so much pug to pug, but box to box, the uh, consistency of the, the moisture could be very different. And so if you, even if your measurement is exact, the um, moisture content will be different. And also another thing that took me a long time to realize was that when I make this pot, and I make it in a few minutes and I finish it up and get the measurement, I'm done with it. I cut under it, I'm done with it. But sometimes when I first started making lids, I'd futz yeah. with them and I'd take a lot of time making that lid. Well, when you're doing that, you're, you're putting more water in it, you're taking away a lot of the fine particles. Even if your measurement is exact, exact, that shrinkage will be different. And so uh, try and not to uh, spend over an over amount of time. You know, just try and get it and measure it. Maybe I missed something. How did you determine the measurement from this to how do you, what are you using to measure okay. to know where to stop with your lid? What I did last night, and of course this has shrunk because right, that was uh, another it's been question. sitting okay. for um, well, about 16 hours. So you can see, look at the difference. It's a good third of an inch off or more. But what I did last night was I looked, you, when you do use calipers, you use the very tip, the very, okay. the very tip, mm -hmm. you put it over top, and what I'm eyeballing is the very bottom of the neck, oh, right here. Okay. And so I am eyeballing that. Then what I did, 
basically is I took my ruler and base right right now mm -hmm. this is how wide right to this line here but last night so it has shrunk a good quarter of an inch today so that's that's pretty amazing so if you throw so I'm going to cut under this I'm going to dry it with my handy torch And boy, it really is stinging, isn't it? It's not really hot, but I can take this now and let's see. Oh, it's going to be too it's small. Too small. Well, poop. Don't bring the phone. So I'm going to have to make a lesson. Yeah, good lesson. Let's make another one. <laughs> Don't you know what I'm doing? So how many do you, I know you've done this for a long time, but how many, like, you do a dozen? I'm assuming that's what I would do, probably. I usually make them in a series of eight or a dozen, you know, okay. sometimes okay. 20, you know, so just you make, uh, uh, yeah, so if I have a board lined up with these, then I'm going to, um, you know, each one will be a little different mm -hmm. because I'm not a machine, and it will, hmm. oh, I stopped, um, each one will be a little different. So each, you know, if I make 12 ginger jars and 12 lids, one's, maybe two are gonna fit really nice. Three are gonna be okay, so <laughs> you know. Gonna, like, and then, then I'm gonna have one down there and I go, ooh, that could be a vase. <laughs> you know, look at that vase I made. Nice. I don't know. Um, I mean, do you work in, you don't work in series? I don't, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. I'm just curious. I, I don't expect any, I know there's no real equation, so to speak, mm -hmm. but just out of curiosity. I think it's really hard to make one mm -hmm. and get it just yeah. right. Um, okay, guys, let's see if I can do this one. So you, you were right, Teresa. It's, I did make it taller. I'll cut this one off. Is it getting to be, let's see, number one. And it really dependent on what you want the silhouette to look like more than anything else, right? Mm -hmm. And I want the, I want it to be pretty much straight up and down and um, so that it doesn't, you know, jingle jangle on it, you know, on the, mm -hmm. make a lot of noise. I'm the one who gets to make lots of noise, not my pots. Sometimes they do. Sometimes, if you make goblets, you can put little balls in the stems and have them <laughs> make noise. That was when the, then, then when they're empty, you know. It's like time for more. First time I bought one with a little ball in it, I was like, What's that for? How come it's making noise? And the potter looked at me and said, that's when it's empty. You go, more. <laughs> more. I love it. Oh, that's cool. I love it. That's funny. Okay. Don't fall. I do not need to no fall. More no, One time out of the fall. alehouse. I do not need to fall. Everybody makes fun of me. Hi. Put your molly or lids on your pot. I try to. The ones that need to be trimmed, I do trim on my pots because then you really get a chance to see what they look like. And uh, this one is not a very good lid, but that's okay. Excuses, but this clay is really, it's recycled clay. And I really thought, it's really difficult. Yeah. I mean, these are really sharp tools, but they don't want to cut it. See how it is pulling? Yeah. 
weird. Just hasn't but, aged enough, perhaps? Um, yeah, Teresa's been really great. Tim has done a lot of our recycling, but Teresa has been really great at doing it. But, I mean, this clay is two weeks old, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, it's not... But, but if the lid didn't fit as well as it does... It oh, would, it would be jingling. Yeah, yeah. you wouldn't be able to do that. Use your torch. Use your torch. Well, well, that's no, the main I thing. was going to ask a torch question. Can I do sure, that? Sure, of course you can I ask a like torch it. question. Yeah. Um, I saw... This is why I don't use a torch. You... Cut off, you wire you saw off. You do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You wire off the lids and things that you're torching before you torch. You cannot torch things when they're already adhered to the wheel or to the back. Do you see so, what I'm saying? I do that because of the shrinkage. And so that is why you do. Okay. okay. That's why. I mean, right. if you're just going to dry it just a tiny bit in one certain place, okay. like to put on a lid or something of that sort, okay. then uh, you can. You know. Um, but I find trimming on the wheel, just uh, trimming the lids on the wheel, you know, just really nice. Because I just threw it, I wouldn't normally, obviously, you know, try and do a, lid, a piece one day and then do a lid another. That's why the middle of it seems to be sinking in. Um, so you don't you don't even need to put like a piece of plastic over to keep the keep it from sticking. No, because of the difference in in the clay. Um, yeah. So I'm you know I'm really hard to finish this up, but without having it crash on me. So I'm just going to leave this one the way it is. Basically, I just wanted to show you how to make a cap. Okay, so what did you measure? <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah, what are we funny. doing? We're doing a cap lid, <laughs> kind of like Andrea's little cap lid there. So what I want to do is I want I wanted to measure the inside, mm -hmm. and what I'm going to measure on this is the outside. Okay. okay. That makes sense. So does that make sense to you? Yep. Okay. Jess, does that make sense to you? Yep. <laughs> what year are you in at Alfred? Uh, my second. Are you? Um, How's your major? Uh, yeah, art. Um, I'm not like I, don't, I haven't picked a major within the art school. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's the hard part. <laughs> okay. So here's this one. Put a little swirl in the middle again, just for the fun of it. And then, this is my third one. So my third piece here, it's kind of small. I've got to think of the very top. What do I want that to look like? And I, I kind of like what Andrea did there, where she's just, it's very flat. It, it works for that piece. Um, and I know what kind of handles I'm going to put on this piece. So I think having just a, a lid that doesn't make a statement, I guess, is kind of more what I'm after. Something that just is kind of plain. So rather than have it straight up and down, you're moving in a little bit? I am. Mm -hmm. So that's moving. different than this cap. Because I want... I want this one to fit nice and snug right at the edge, right at the edge. And it is hard to get this kind of lid um, so perfect that it fits exactly on the inside. Mm -hmm. So, and the inside actually isn't just vertical, it comes in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I have to think about all that. <laughs> it's Mary running over there. So here's my number three. And then I'm going to take a trusty clothespin and I'm just going to put a nice little 
math person, you know? It's like, why do people tell us some checkbooks? <laughs> Is it close enough? Is that what you say? Yeah. I heard you say that. that you said it's close enough. It's OCD-ness. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, uh, I mean, you know, it's just because it would take me a whole day to balance my checkbook. You know, kind of thing. Okay. So this one's ready. So the considerations are how deep, how, how much you want it to hang over. And actually, I'm thinking ahead to what kind of handles I'm going to put on it. Um, so there's a lot of that. I don't want this to make any statement. I want this to just be kind of bland. Oh, that's interesting. She forgot that classic line. Here, hold my beer. She threw the that you have to use before all the ridiculous stuff like that. Let's dry her up one more time. Tiles for me because I can't bang things right now. And oh my goodness, it was wonderful, Barbara. Thank you. I just have to, I have to dry the top just a little bit because it, I have to say I love recycled clay, but it does need to sit for a while. Cause see how it's tearing? It's really weird to me. We had trouble with the building too. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Tim's uh, Tim and Teresa are both recycling, and their methods are different. Tim's, you know, if it sits for six weeks, it's all right. Um, Teresa seems to be um, her technique seems to be a little different. I don't know if she's soaking the clay more and therefore getting it in there. So I. I really thought, you know, I could do some of this, but it's not so nice for making small things. So basically, this is not the most beautiful thing, but oh, and it's too wet. But let's see. Let's use the torch. <laughs> <laughs> My answer to every. You need to do a workshop on torch use. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I went to Robert Compton's workshop making giant pots years ago and he uses these gigantic hello he uses these gigantic um, lines and we had there were only five of us in the workshop and we had these gigantic gas lines and burners that were like oh, you're burners. Me. inside indoors wow it was pretty amazing so this will look better once it's yeah, once the things are on mm -hmm. no, it's okay but it's not great I would actually probably carve out some little places here where my I would put my fingers over it and then just take my um, uh, tool and put little marks there so that it would be high underneath a little bit of the same.